We find ourselves at the Evolution Championships in 2016. Mandalay Bay Arena in Las Vegas, roaring as top 8 of Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 is about to begin. Due to two amazing upsets earlier in the tournament, we now have two legendary players fighting for their tournament lives, Chris G and Justin Wong. But how did we get here? This is how one of the greatest Marvel 3 players cemented his legacy and earned his first world championship win with one of the most impressive losers bracket runs of all time. In 2016, Chris G was hunting for his first EVO win. Over the past 4 years, he has consistently proven himself as a top player with multiple top 8 EVO placements, including a narrow loss to Justin Wong to get second in 2014. In 2015, he had two unfortunate upsets that placed him in ninth, when he was beaten by Japanese players Cross and RF. Chris G took the offseason to hone his skills and become a new beast. Every tournament he went leading up to this championship, he would place first or second. It was now his best shot at becoming a world champion. He was the undisputed number one player that year, but with that level of success, the entire Marvel 3 player base was out to beat him. Players were theory crafting and building teams to get any advantage they could over Chris G. To make matters harder, Chris G's team is one of the most difficult teams to pilot. On the surface, Chris G's team of Morgan, Doom, Virgil is simple. Place fireballs on screen to make it difficult for your opponents to hit you and whittle them down. If things go south, Virgil is a great insurance plan. In reality, this is one of the hardest teams to play at the highest level. Let's dive into why this team is just so difficult to win with. Morgan is the core of the team. Her fireballs are incredibly strong. She can throw them at unique angles that make it very difficult to approach through normal means. She makes it even stronger through her Astral Vision Super, which creates a clone of her that will mimic all of her moves. This is what allows her to control so much of the screen and deal absurd damage off of a stray fireball hit. She also has some of the best normal moves in the game, especially for protecting herself. Her Air Heavy covers a large area around her, and her Shell Kick hits multiple times and can be very difficult to stop. But Marvel is a dynamic game built around mobility, and this is where Morgan's weakness exists, and where Chris Chi proves he is the best Morgan to ever do it. To do Morgan's fireballs correctly, it requires multiple precise inputs in a very short time, and if even one of these inputs are missed, you can leave yourself extremely vulnerable to counterattack. To shoot one set of fireballs, you'd have to do quarter circle forward to shoot a fireball, quarter circle back to cancel into flight, quarter circle forward again to shoot another fireball, and quarter circle back to cancel out of flight and keep yourself safe. Players learn that you can beat her with a mixture of speed and clearing the fireballs. Much like extremely difficult Dark Soul bosses, the goal was to create a small opening where the Morgan player would miss their input and allow just enough time to get a hit or a mix-up. Players like Justin would use Wolverine and Storm, while F-Champ would use Magneto and Dormammu to find these openings that they needed. But very few people could keep up with the immense execution test Chris G put not only on them, but himself. When Chris G built this team, he knew people would eventually figure out how to beat Morgan, but he could make it even harder for them by using one of the best assists in the game, Dr. Doom's Missiles. Doom is an interesting character, because he's the most versatile character in the game. Almost every team gets better by adding Doom, either because of his amazing assists, his extremely damaging and simple combos, or because of his TAC infinite, allowing any hit to potentially be a touch of death. Doom Missiles was the glue that held this team together though. It can be used defensively, allowing Morgan to get an Astral Vision activation, or push would-be attackers off of her. It can also be used offensively as a way to lock opponents down, allowing multiple mix-ups, or for players to take immense chip damage from both the fireballs and missiles. Where Chris G truly doesn't get enough credit though, is his Virgil play. It's where I believe he separated himself from the pack and truly came into his own. Virgil is almost exclusively used as a last resort anchor on a team. When he uses X-Factor 3, he can easily destroy an entire team in a matter of seconds. While Chris G has been known to make these comebacks and use Virgil in this way, He'll pioneer Virgil, taking a more active part of the team. Normally with Doom Virgil shells, when your point character dies, the players will use Doom to try and do as much damage as they can until he dies, then use X-Factor 3 Virgil. Chris G decided to bring Virgil out and use a combination of Doom missiles and Virgil's amazing moveset to bring the fight to his opponent. This would allow him to battle against the teams that were built only around defeating Morgan. It made his team incredibly well balanced. Adding this new strategy and aspect to this game is where he went from an amazing Morgan player to one of the greatest Marvel 3 players of all time. If you enjoy this content, please consider liking and subscribing as it helps tremendously and allows me to build some of the bigger projects I have planned. Thank you and back to the show. We come back to 2016, Bill Kevin has just upset Chris G and sent him into loser's bracket. A huge blow, as now instead of winning 3 more sets to win the tournament, it's win 7 sets in a row. There's no time to waste though. To even make it to Sunday, where Top 8 would fight it out for the world champion title, Chris G had to immediately fight Ryan LV, an incredibly strong competitor who also played Morgan. But something new had awakened in Chris G. He meticulously picked apart Ryan LV's team and beat him 3-0. He had earned his Sunday spot in a seat center stage in the Mandalay Bay Arena. But this was just the beginning. We now are back to where we started, Justin Wong vs. Chris G. Two players who were supposed to meet in Grand Finals are now fighting for their tournament lives, the loser getting 8th place and sent home. Justin has done well against Chris G in the past, but it has always been close. This time, Justin Wong has come up with a specific team to try and beat Chris G. Using Virgil Point instead of Wolverine, he's looking to abuse teleports and strong normals to catch Chris G making a mistake. 
Mash starts out with a bang. Justin wants to put the pressure on early and uses all of his resources in an attempt to open Chris G up. Utilizing X Factor and Akuma Assist, he's able to get the hit he needed on Morgan to kill her. Thank you, Akuma. Helmet break Quick and easy finish against Morigan, all right? Chris G uses his amazing defense to defend against the aggressiveness of Justin. With the well-timed push block, he's able to find the opening he needs to super with Doom and switch Virgil in. He then immediately switches his game plan and becomes aggressive, dashing through the air and hitting Justin Wong. Knowing he has the advantage now, Chris G pops X-Factor and guarantees the kill, getting a good incoming setup. Uh, in double trigger, of course. People are not expecting it, man. It's pretty quick. Justin does a string of amazing blocks and uses Storm's Hailstorm to wait out Chris G's X-Factor time. He then baits Chris G into advancing and hits him with an air S as he comes down. He reset back to neutral and he baits him again, this time getting significantly more damage as he dodges the missiles. With no resources, it's extremely difficult for Chris G to win this. Justin plays incredibly safe until he eventually catches Chris, who has to advance. Justin won. So good with the At this point. Wow, and it combo. In the lightning attack. Game 2 starts out just as fast, except this time Chris G gets the opening hit. Using TCs to finish off Justin's Virgil. Where are we going? Where are we going? Where are we going up? Yeah, but this is going to be mid screen instead of in the corner, so he's going to have to keep it basic. Goes for a down TC actually, so it's definitely going to be a kill on Virgil. He now gets to start his game plan, and Justin eats fireball after fireball, chipping him down. He attempts to punish Morgan with a hailstorm, but Christy blocks it. Fireballs rain down as Justin attempts to use Akuma to get in, but gets hit for his troubles. Eventually, Storm can't take the heat and falls to the fireball. Even though he's patient as ever, but he find the answer to avoid this no. Here comes Akuma. Akuma comes in and has to block as Morgan is in astral vision. He takes to the skies in an attempt to dodge fireballs and catch Morgan trying to shoot a fireball. With his incredibly fast Duke and Super, Justin finds a small opening in Morgan and Doom, but missiles stop him from continuing the combo. Justin knows he has to be aggressive as Morgan goes to the sky, but Christie falls down with a shell kit, catching Akuma and taking game two. Justin Wong answers back with a decisive Game 3 victory. We are now in Game 4. Justin again starts his aggression. Rap is slashing through Morgan, but Chris G blocks it. With swords coming out, Justin catches the Doom Assist, putting pressure on Chris, but he stands strong. He uses Morgan's small hitbox to duck under Virgil's round trip, getting a huge punish. In a rare miss, Christy drops the combo, letting Virgil live. But Christy now gets to start his Astral Vision game plan. Justin now has to attempt to weave through the fireball maze, but Virgil continues to get chopped down. Justin hard tags in Storm to try and keep Virgil alive, but she falls right into Christy's open arms. With an immediate X-Factor activation, Christy ends Storm and Virgil comes in on life support. Rid of Storm early, he's gonna have a lot of X-Factor to work with. Virgil will probably get chipped out, and I don't think that Justin is going to save him with X-Factor. He immediately dies. Now it's up to just Akuma. This is Justin Wong, and anything can happen. Akuma eats a large amount of damage, but has two meters, X-Factor, and a dream. He teleports in and attempts to catch Chris, but Morgan smartly dashes away. Akuma runs into a fireball and survives with just a pixel. Oh, nice break. break! Okay, critique! Justin right shows his amazing awareness by hitting the off-screen Doom Call killing him and taking a huge part of Chris's team. Down. Is he gonna bring in Virgil? No, he's gonna stay in there with the sofa. It's more bullet hell. Oh my lord, Justin oh, Wong showing that hunger. As Justin reigns from above, Chris G does an amazing Shadow Servant super move to become invincible and switch into Virgil. The super move just barely stops Akuma and both players revert to neutral. Akuma throws a fireball and teleports, catching Virgil. Morgan is now all that's left between being sent home and having another chance. Justin jumps back, hoping to catch Morgan trying to escape, but Chris G is patient. He then dashes in, catching Akuma with a shell kick and saving his tournament life. We are now in game 5. Both players show amazing respect for each other and show how stressful this game is about to be. After a brief pause to compose themselves, they go back into it. He starts off with a scary opener, with both players attempting to grab each other. Christy blocks that Helmbreaker to get a full combo confirm. Firm off of Akuma. Oh, he chicken guarded so he can find the, the hole and found it. Where are we going? Side. Christy sees that he will drop the combo, so smartly dashes back to get Morgan back in with Astral Vision. Virgil eats fireball after fireball again, forcing the hard tag to storm. Christy capitalizes on this and combos her down. With both Storm and Virgil hurting, Justin has to find a way to get back into this game. He waits out the Astral Vision time at the top of the screen and switches into Virgil with the Swords activation. After a quick scramble, Justin finally finds the opening he was looking for, grabbing Morgan and using X Factor to dodge the missiles. Morgan somehow survives with just a pixel of life left. Christy uses his own X Factor now to stay alive and catches Justin. Ah! Oh, Justin. 
Lisa Wall slipping right there. I'm pretty sure Jay tried to hold up there to avoid that rush down, but got clipped on the way up. Storm comes in and attempts to dodge fireballs. She tries to hail Storm to gain some space, but a fireball hits her from behind. Justin finds a small opening to tag in Akuma. He stays in the air, creating more and more astral vision time. Chris G plays incredibly smart though, doing safe doom calls and never putting himself in a spot caught by Akuma's Hadouken super. Eventually, Justin locks Morgan down enough to chip her out with a soup. He switches to Storm and gets a huge opening on Dr. Doom, pushing him into the corner. Chris G has to guess again as Kumatatsu comes out, locking him down. Justin goes low and catches him. Hold on here, hold on, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Chris G guesses correctly on the TAC though, and they reset back to neutral. With two meters, Chris G can get Virgil in safely with the sword's activation. Justin floats down, dodging the missiles and pushing Virgil back. He catches Virgil as he attempts to come in again, but a missile rains down, ruining his combo. With time ticking down, Justin throws out a hailstorm super. Every inch of life matters now. From Justin, go for that. Just wants to slow it down. Justin hailstorms again and tries to throw out whirlwinds to stop Virgil from advancing. The Christy teleports on him and punishes. Now Akuma must somehow catch both characters in the next five seconds. The clean throw week pushes both characters back to neutral, and Christy knows it's over. He dashes back to make sure Justin can't make one of his crazy comebacks. And as time runs out, he beats a huge roadblock to an evil victory. And that is it. What a close set. That's as close as you can possibly get. Chris G staying alive. Like we said before, he's going to be working extremely hard through this loser's bracket because he wants to add this to his resume. After such a close set, Chris G faces his next opponent, Priest. Priest he matches up very well against Morgan, but Chris G had other plans. He mentally shatters him game one and doesn't stop there. He absolutely dismantles Priest, winning with a quick 3-0. In a dark twist of fate, he now has to face Dual Kevin, the player that initially sent him down to lose his bracket, but this isn't the same Chris G as yesterday. With incredible play, he sends Dual Kevin home with a decisive 3-0. Now he faces off against Angelic, another Wolverine player, but he uses Dormammu and Shuman Goras Mystic Ray. This team is incredibly strong and has tons of answers to Chris G's team. But again, Chris G shows his absolute dominance by destroying Angelic 3-0. He's fought his way to grand finals, but one player stands in his way. Last year's champion, Kane Blue River. Just two months ago at West Coast Born Zone 5, KBR had destroyed Chris G in the finals 3-0. Now, Chris G would have to beat him in two sets straight to prove that he is the best Marvel player in the world. Set 1 starts out, and Chris G lands a great opening on the start, landing a combo, and importantly, getting back into Astral Vision. Fireballs rain across the screen as Hulk looks her way in. Kibir eventually finds what he's looking for. Morgan floats across the screen, and he snatches her from midair. He uses all of his meter to guarantee the combo and kill Morgan. Oh, he found the corner pocket! Oh! Oh, 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 oh! And okay, first blood Hulk then sneakily goes underneath Doom, and Hagar hits him. With Hulk's insane damage, he makes quick work of Dr. Doom. But X Factor 3 Virgil is no slouch. But if he doesn't touch the ground, it's all over. Beside Nico, put it in some damage, bringing in Hagar. Oh! KBR has other plans though, and clips Virgil coming in, using his X Factor and winning game one. Hershey's oh man, count it, count it, <laughs> count it. Game Blue River two games away for another championship. But now, Christy decides to take fate into his own hands. He spends the next three games dismantling KBR and resetting the bracket. Oh, we got a reset! Whoever wins three games now is named the world champion. Grishy makes an absolute statement the first two games, not even losing a character. Only one more game stands between Chris and the title he deserves. The KBR won't make it easy for him. Off the opener, Chris G grabs Hulk. He gets a TC combo. That is going to be a combo. The missile is going to help extend. Where are we going? We're going somewhere. We are going down. down. What? Uh -oh. Bravery. This is about to get serious right here. Will Chris G finish this? Will he be optimal about this? Is he going to go for the infinite? No, he misses. Drops it, but gets out of there. But drops the infinite. KBR attempts to hit the aerial doom with a gamma crush, but Chris G escapes. He immediately works on bringing Morgan in again with an astral vision. Instead of shooting loads of fireballs, he does one set and backs up, knowing that one Hulk charge can kill his entire team. He then chips Hulk down, putting himself in a great position. Sentinel comes in and takes to the skies. Draining the astral vision time as much as he can, but Chris G has meter to spare. Kibir falls down, looking to get a hit on Morgan, but gets clipped for his troubles. 
Chris Street converts the combo and kills Sentinel. At this point, almost nothing can stop him. He activates Astral Vision as Hagar comes in. With only X Factor and a dream, KBR jumps hurriedly at Morgan, trying to land anything at all. He's able to hit Doom with missiles stop him from doing more. Knowing he can't pop X Factor too early, he rides a knife's edge, hoping for a stray hit to start his comeback. But the fireballs keep chipping his life down. He comes within a pixel of his life, but he X Factors just in time. Chris shows his amazing execution one last time. Coming off fireballs and missiles, and there'd be no gap for KBR to get in. As Hagar closes in, Rishi dragon punches and missiles rain down. Rishi lands the final blow and the camera cuts to him. Boom! Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 Champion! This has to be poetic for him! He sits still, letting the moment come to him. He stands up. Years of hard work and dedication have finally paid off. He grabbed the only accolade he was missing, the EVO World Championship title. There's no denying how truly great he was. Rishi gets a lot of unwarranted hate, and whether he wanted to or not, he became the target of the entire Marvel community. His gameplay was seen as cheap or unfair, but in reality, it was the player behind the team that was truly legendary. We may never see a player as dominant as him again, but he's immortalized as arguably the greatest Marvel 3 player of all time. Make sure to check out Rishi's YouTube and Twitch link below. He still provides amazing content and has shown his dominance in many other games. If you want to see the set that started his loser bracket run, click here. Let me know below what your favorite EVO moment is. Until next time.